This video is about making swirled beads like the green one here which I make in the video and there's a lot of variations that you can do with this and it's a fairly easy technique once you get the basics down but just by altering the coloring and layering and adding other dots and other things you can do an incredible amount of variety with just this one technique. I'm starting out here with a donut bead like the one I made in the last video but just a little bit bigger and I'm letting it cool down and then coming in with a white stringer and I've got my hand resting on the marver so that I can accurately place dots onto the bead and I'm kind of doing like a back and forth pattern so I'm putting down dots and then checking it end on so that I can get the dots evenly spaced and I kind of look at it end on and then I decide how many dots will fit in between so on one side I believe there's two dots two more here that fit in between the ones that are there and then on the other side I think I'm gonna make three dots fit in between just so that they're all evenly spaced and all approximately the same size. So if there was any that needed more glass I could go around and I could put a little bit more glass on them. But Then I'm going to come in with a metal paddle and flatten out each dot and this is going to help with the next step because what I'm doing here is kind of making a little plateau or a little mesa with an edge on it. So you've got this dot and you've got the edge around it that's created by pushing it down just lightly with the paddle. And then I'm also in some cases spreading the dot in a different direction to move it so that they're actually more well aligned. So then I come in with the light green rod and warm it up slowly but then I'm going to heat up the end of it until there's a pretty good ball of molten glass on the end and I'm going to come down on top of my white dots and basically fill in that space all the way to the edge. If you push down just right and it takes practice but if you push down just right onto that dot with the edge it will fill up the space almost perfectly. Now you gotta get the right amount of pressure or the glass will go over the edge and it won't look good. But if you get just the right amount of pressure it'll fill in that spot and make a perfect size dot to cover the dot below it. So that's what I'm doing here and then I'm going in and just melting those down and being a little bit neurotic about having them all the same size. So once I've got them all the same size, and you want to check that carefully, but once you get them all the same size, then all you need to do is melt these dots in. Now in this case, I melt them all the way down so that the entire bead is smooth again. I sped up this part because it's the same technique that I showed in the previous video. I'm just melting all this stuff down evenly until the whole bead is smooth and then pulling it out of the flame to let it center up. And then kind of letting it cool down here. That's step one. So step two is to basically twist all these dots. So I'm heating up the area in between the edge of the two dots, kind of where the two humps come together. And then I stick the stringer in, twist a little bit, wait, and snap it off. Now you want to do this all in one motion kind of, but you want to also have it be discrete steps. Um, so you stick down, twist, Break it off. 
And I'm doing this all the way around in order. Some people like to go back and forth to different sides of the bead. But if you do it quick enough, there's not really much risk of your bead cracking when you do this. So holding my hand on the marber, got my left hand on the table. And as long as you do this accurately and you get that stringer stuck down in the right spot, then this technique looks pretty nice. Now keep in mind that you're going to get a dot of color from the stringer left behind and if you want to hide that then use a stringer of your base color. In this case I wanted the dots to be left behind to add some more pattern to it. But that's just one of the variations you can do here. So I'm continuing on melting in the last dots here Twist them around, hold, and then snap off. And I'm the only reason I'm wiggling the stringer back and forth is just to kind of feel the glass. I can feel when it gets hard enough that I can snap it off. You can also blow on it to make it snap off a little quicker, but with glass, I find that just waiting for things is usually the better way. So when you've got all the dots twisted on one side, I like to go in and just give it a little bit of heat before I change my grip up a little bit and then I'm going to come in and twist the dots on the other side the same way. Got my hand on the marber, I heat up the area, plunk in the stringer, twist, and snap off. So. This is the same as the first side, so I sped this part up, but it's still the same thing, just stick, twist, snap off, all the way around. And then I'm just going to change back to my regular grip here and melt the bead down totally smooth again. So melting it down, letting it center up. And then at this point, I kind of, I just didn't like the way it looked. So I applied the rule of, if you don't like something, add more dots until you do. So I'm just going in and putting a white dot on each one of those little big green areas that I kind of didn't like. I wanted to break those up a little bit. So just going in and filling in that space and trying to make those dots, you know, again, same size and evenly spaced and aligned with the pattern beneath. So again, I think I'm going to have the sped up part here because I'm just being neurotic about the size and alignment of the dots before I put this bead away. But as you can see, this technique is very simple. It's easy to do and with practice, you can do it consistently and make a nice bead like that.